everybody. Just wait for this to start. Okay, so, um, so I started my first business 10 years ago in Hong Kong. Um, it's a beauty business. And four years later, I decided to start a bank hall, which is a lingerie boutique. Um, on this page, I guess you should just take note, there's no successful word in front of a Becca Moore. It's been six years and it's still work in progress. But um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about a lot of my fuck ups, especially with a Becca Moore. So I wanted to start off with misconceptions of an entrepreneurial life. Uh, firstly, doing what you love. So if you do have a passion for something and you want to make it into a business, that's wonderful. But to be honest, you're not, most of the time, you're not even going to be doing it. You're going to be wearing many different hats. You're basically your sales, operations, HR. Uh oh, what happened? <laughs> That's okay. That wasn't me, I hope. No, he's going to touch. Okay. Yeah, so you're, you're wearing all these different hats, uh, including being like even a handyman or even a janitor, especially when you start up. You're doing everything. And because you're doing everything, you don't have a lot of time. If you think starting your own business meaning that means that you're going to have more time to yourself, think again. You're definitely not. Um, there's no there's no maternity leave or sick leave or annual leave. You're on holidays, but you're still on the laptop taking calls and this and that. Um, the other thing is, if it kind of looks easy, it seems like a lot of times being an entrepreneur or having a start looks easy, but there, there are no shortcuts to a startup. There's none. You have to put the work in. Um, and I suppose it always looks easy because as an entrepreneur, you represent your business. So you need to portray positivity and excitement to generate interest, right? If I'm talking about all the fuck ups, no one wants to really check it out in terms of um, general popula population. And a lot of the times you always see the success stories. Um, but most of the times, it's a pure fact, most businesses don't survive. And success is not guaranteed. It doesn't matter how much money you raise and how much experience you have, how many connections you have. Even having a successful business does not guarantee the next one will be successful. And it's always looking glamorous. Like This is me working from a magazine point of view. This is my reality, my little <laughs> home office, um, in my pajamas most of the time, with house stuff, lingerie catalogs, toys and, and all sorts of random stuff. So, backstory, it's pretty much like everybody else, 20 something, lost, was in a big four accounting firm, hated it, moved to marketing, was okay, moved to Hong Kong, couldn't get a job, can't speak Cantonese, found an opportunity um, to, to start waxing salons in Hong Kong. So, I started waxing salons, specifically um, Brazilian waxing. So, of course, I got loved out the door by my friends thinking that you're mad. And especially 10 years ago, success was deemed as being in a big corporation. So nowadays, it's completely changed and it's, it's for the better. Um, yeah, so this is how I started my first business. So I found the opportunity, I saw the demand, I did all my research, I literally signed myself up for Brazilian waxing courses. Um, researched my products, looked up how to start a business. Once I was ready, I started the business, dumped my entire life savings. So I was super cautious with all my expenses. And every day I was there, day and night. So it was great that within like six months I was making money. Now comes to Avec. Fuck up, fuck up, fuck up, basically. I started the business because I'm like, oh, I have money in the bank, I'm just gonna start it. And I basically went on a massive lingerie shopping spree. Then I realized, oh, what is the difference between the bras? How do you properly fit? Like, I wasn't even wearing the right bra size. Actually, eight out of 10 women don't wear the right bra size. And then after that, I realized, oh, it still wasn't working. What do people actually want? So I completely fucked all that up. And these two went out the door as well. <laughs> I wasn't conservative, just purely because I guess there was, I was leveraging off the money I was making off my first business, and the bank accounts were all merged. And I was not even at my lingerie boutique. And you're probably wondering what the hell is wrong with you. Um, well, this is what happened. I moved from Hong Kong to Singapore. I had a little mini-me, like wrapped around my legs half the time. And because I want to make life more difficult for myself, add that. So, 
if anyone had any one of these situations, I would tell them, do not start a business. Okay. Don't ask me what happened with me. Um, next major fuck ups is, for me was branding and having my brand identity. So what, because I never did research or found the opportunity or the demand, I just thought, okay, I'm going to leverage up my, my waxing salons and have a mashup. So I made a lingerie boutique with two treatment rooms. So my rent and my staffing costs were pretty much covered by my first business. Um, I wanted to focus on little boutique um, brands that people haven't heard of. And then that wasn't really working, so I decided that I'm going to expand my product range. Go to swimwear, shapewear, sleepwear, accessories. Um, they all fucked up. So then I decided, okay, people are familiar with brands. This is Asia, of course. So I'm going to focus on those. Close my um, physical store in Hong Kong and focus on the e-business, e e-commerce business. And because it's e-commerce, Sexy Laundry does extremely well. So I'm listening to my customers and I'm going towards that. Still question marks, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Next, I wanted to talk about the whole e-commerce. This e-commerce is a massive monster. So if anyone's thinking of doing e-commerce, just be wary, it's about 50 times as much work as having a store. Two main components is the technical side of it, finding someone to help you is extremely difficult. Um, I've gone from cheap freelance people to big name companies to help me, both messed it up. I've had to redo my entire business. Um, and so I'm on my third round of doing it. And uh, the next major component of e-commerce is the content. The amount of content that you have to put behind it is crazy. It's not just uploading products, it's naming them and linking them and images and descriptions and, and putting them in filters and categories. It's just for one product, imagine that. Um, and pretty much every step of the way for e-commerce has been a fuck up. Nothing ever goes smoothly. You change one thing, something else messes up. And that's essentially the nature of e-commerce. Well, if you're using especially the program that we do, which is Magento. Um, so, following that, the next, of course, is marketing. So, let's talk about my marketing. Ten years ago, it was still very much traditional marketing. So, I was familiar with it. So, I was in that industry. So, you know, I was able to, to leverage off my, my knowledge and make my first business, you know, known and um, popular. And just, yeah. So, nowadays, it's digital marketing. It's this whole other beasts that you need to, to be aware of. Um, you don't have to be an expert, but you definitely need to know about digital marketing. Um, it's very technical and there's so many elements to it. The biggest, obviously, search engine marketing, which is Google. So for me, when I started, and I'm like, oh, okay, Google, AdWords, okay, I need an account. Um, I need to start with keywords, so I started just throwing keywords out there. So. With my beauty business, you know, it's waxing salons. What I haven't told you yet was the name. So the name of my beauty business is Nude. So I'm putting Nude, Nude Hong Kong. <laughs> Budget went through the roof. I've got so many clicks, obviously, because people are looking for porn. And I didn't even, I had no clue whatsoever. So I dumped a whole heap of money down the toilet, just purely because I had no clue. So do your research. No, and try not to fuck up as much as you can because you can. You can end up spending a whole lot of money. So to kind of round up for my tips, be conservative. You need to dedicate 100% to a startup. Um, my biggest tip was probably to be friendly and to network. So you're all here and doing a great job coming to a networking event. Um, purely, you know, every time I've gone to a networking event, I've always walked out with a great like contact or a great tool or a great website or a great app. Um, and so definitely it's great to have this kind of community because everyone is really willing to help each other out. Um, so get out there and be ballsy. Go up and start talking to people. Say hi, my name is whatever, whatever. You know, I want to pick your brain about something. Um, because you have to be shameless not to, to gain more knowledge, to find more customers, to talk to the media, you just have to put yourself out there.
So my last slide is a nice, attractive slide. Take a look at my website, 15% off, use the code FUND15. There you go. Thank you. So we're going to take a lot of Q&A. Is there anyone who would like to ask a question? Yeah, so I saw conservative and ballsy in the same uh, slides. How do they go hand in hand? Conservative in terms of being cautious with your money. Because I think a lot of times, especially when it comes to a technical type of business, and you're not a technical person, you could definitely be taken for a ride. And so it's always, always be conservative. Don't just pay up front, in a sense, right? You kind of test people out, see how it goes before you commit. Yeah. So you've shared fuck ups, right? Right now, what would you consider as success? And has it been different? You know, like when you first started, perhaps you defined success as X, mm -hmm. and then now maybe you look at success differently after all these experiences. Um, if I just had a Becca Mall, I would, I don't know whether it would be here today. I take both businesses as a whole, so overall, I feel like I'm successful in the sense that my first business is big enough that it can sustain my second. Um, you know, we make money, we are very well known, and it gives me more time to focus on a Beck. So I, you know, I, there's still so much potential for it, and I still have time to make it successful. We'll take one more question. What kind of e-commerce platform do you prefer and why? I think it all depends on what you do. If it's like a small business, you can go for something like Shopify, which is great, easy to use, very user-friendly. I've got three, three, four thousand SKUs, which is individual products. So we just went for the biggest, baddest one um, because it's we can customize it to any way we want. Because ultimately, I would love to be the lingerie site for Asia, and to to sustain that kind of size, we we need a monster. So we went with Magento. So is a customer, you run the WordPress or is it a Shopify account or is it? It's a Magento. Magento. Yes. So it's very technical. It's all basically coding, and that's why I had so many mess ups with with. Um, with outside. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you.